I think this is a scandal. Unnecessary C-sections are being inflicted upon women, and more importantly, on their babies, and no one is warning them about the serious lifelong consequences. Consider that in England in 1950, just 3% of babies were born using C-section. In 1990, that had risen to just over 10%, and now it has shot up to 35% in official figures, though in many places it's considerably higher than that. I think that everyone needs to be aware of the potential consequences that C-sections have on a child's development. Childbirth is a very important event when it comes to setting up a baby's immune system. As a baby is born, they are encountering microorganisms, things like bacteria, for the very first time. The type of bacteria encountered at birth is a crucial factor in educating the newborn's immune system. Normally, the bugs first encountered would be bacteria from the mother's vagina and perineum, followed by microorganisms which are naturally found within breast milk. These bacteria shape the formation of the gut microbiome, the bugs that live in our guts. The gut microbiome is a key interface between the outside world and the immune system and plays a crucial role in calibrating the immune system, as well as impacting other aspects of health including neurodevelopment and metabolism. With a C-section, the first bacteria encountered are now not those from mum, but those found in hospitals. That is not a good trade. Because C-section interferes with this key developmental moment, it can interfere with immune system development, neurodevelopment, and metabolism. Papers like these two, which I've linked in the description, provide crucial information on the potential consequences of all this. The immune system consequences are thought to include an increased risk of asthma, food allergies, susceptibility to respiratory tract infections, and possibly increased risk of autoimmune conditions including inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, celiac disease, and type 1 diabetes. The neurodevelopmental consequences are thought to include an increased risk of autism, ADHD, and reduced cognitive performance. And the metabolic consequences are thought to include an increased risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes in later life. The antibiotics routinely given prior to C-sections are not going to help any of these either. When C-sections are discussed with mothers, none of these factors are talked about. Another key point is the timing of a pre-planned C-section. What timing are doctors choosing? For all anybody knows, the mother's body might be gearing up to deliver the baby at 42 weeks, but a C-section planned for 39 weeks may bring their baby out into the world three weeks prior to nature's plan. Do you think that's gonna have an impact on development? Also, the normal hormonal cascade which occurs during vaginal delivery will be absent, which can cause difficulty in initiating breastfeeding, amongst other things. The umbilical cord will be clamped almost immediately, depriving the baby of additional nutrients. Breathing difficulties for the baby are a potential consequence following C-section, sometimes, again, due to being delivered earlier than would otherwise have occurred, but also because they don't have the water from their lungs squeezed out, as would naturally happen as the baby comes down the birth canal. Now, if you've already had a C-section, then do check out the videos in the description, one on immune system calibration, where I go through the other factors involved in the programming of the immune system, one on paracetamol and one on ADHD, because these might help you formulate some actions to take in order to reduce these risks. All the conditions discussed are multifactorial, with C-section being one factor. Something is not right in the care we are giving pregnant women. There is no way the rates of both planned and emergency C-sections need to be anywhere near as high as they currently are. The medicalization of pregnancy and childbirth is creating a lot of problems. There are also a lot of factors in our modern lifestyles that are working against women when it comes to having uncomplicated natural childbirth. Among primitive people, still natural in their habits and living under conditions which favour the healthy development of their physical organisation, labour may be characterised as short and easy, accompanied by few accidents and followed by little or no prostration. As civilization is approached, the time of labor is more extended. From Labour Among Primitive Peoples by George Julius Engelman, 1883. The great contrast in discomfort and length of time of the labor of modern mothers is to be contrasted with ease of childbirth among primitive mothers. Among primitive races living in a primitive state, childbirth was a very simple and rapid process accompanied by little fear or apprehension. From Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston A. Price, 1939, a fantastic book that I recommend to everyone. 
I've previously done a video on the nutrition aspect of it, link is in the description. I will be covering some of the practical aspects of pregnancy and childbirth in future videos that will aim to help the situation women in modern society are facing. Thanks for listening, please do subscribe and I'll see you next time.